We've got an awesome show this week, and I guarantee it'll make you a better bass fisherman. First, Tim Horton unlocks the secrets of an unusual shallow water pattern that works very well in cold water. He'll take us in depth. Then, Rick Clun discusses how the simple crankbait can be the ultimate depth finder. It's this week's Art of Angling. But first, Kevin Van Dam explains fishing various weather conditions in this week's Fishing and Four. Not what most people would consider to be their ideal fishing day, but hey, I've got to go when I got time. You know, when you see the weather forecast like this, I mean, I've got sustained 25 mile an hour winds, it's been spitting rain, it's low clouds. Most people want to stay home by the fire, but to me, this is my favorite time to fish. You know, this is the days when you catch those big fish. With the wind and the cloud cover like this, light penetration is low. The big one should be on the prowl. You just have to use it to your advantage. I know that the bass should be more aggressive. Just bundle up, I've got my Gore-Tex on. I, you know, I can hang out here all day. It's gonna keep me warm and dry, and hopefully we can catch some big fish. These type of days are the days where magic is made. One of the things that's really important to think about when you've got a lot of wind like this is the current that it's creating and how your bait is positioned to these fish. So anytime that I can, unless it's just so brutal that I've got to throw straight down wind, I like to throw across the angle of the wind. That way the current that it's creating presents my lure right in front of the fish. They're gonna be facing into that current. So if I've got an edge that I'm throwing along and the bass is sitting there facing right into the wind, my lure is gonna come straight across in front of them. And that way it's in the best possible location for a good ambush. And that's what you need to do is just remember that current, how it's gonna be set up, and the spots themselves, how the wind blowing in them might create current and create an ambush point. Golly. The biggest thing that the wind does for you is it cuts down light penetration so that the bass are gonna be a more effective predator. It disorients the bait fish. Oh my gosh. And they're looking up. So, you know, my first choice when it's days like today are your baits that fish high in the water column. You know, a spinner bait. Right now I got a big swim bait on and I mean, these are the days you catch giant fish and I've got one of them on right now. So, I mean, cutting down that light penetration, that's, that's critical. This is a tough day to be out fishing but these are the days that I choose as the very best. <laughs> Ate the King Shad. And that's, that's why you go out fishing on days like today, it's for fish like that. That's why I love swim baits right there. Most people fear the wind, you know, when they're, when they're out fishing and it gets windy, they go to the calm side of the lake, they go to protected coves and things. Not me, I, I know the wind is a, is a great ally to me. You know, the, what the wind does is it really pushes plankton and uh, gets the bass looking up in the, in the water column and it, it really gonna help position them. They're gonna get on edges where the wind is blowing into them, on points and things like that. So it really makes my job a lot easier if I can fish where the wind is at. Now I wanna be safe first and foremost, but uh, having a large trolling motor like I've got with 109 pounds of thrust definitely helps. You know, it's really blowing out here and that, yet I can go right down this edge or this bank and keep my bait positioned in the strike zone the whole time. Gosh, when the wind's blowing like this, it doesn't leave you a lot of options. You gotta do what you can do. You gotta fish techniques that kind of help you. And, and that's where spinner baits and you know your power baits really come in. I mean, I've got a really good trolling motor and I couldn't stay out here without it. But, you just can't fish finesse baits on days like today at all. You can't fish slow. You gotta fish fast and you gotta be able to cover water. And uh, you know, you gotta use the conditions to your advantage, you know. My favorite condition is this right here. Heavy cloud cover and wind. I can't pick the days I go fishing, so this is when you wanna be out here. This is when the big fish bite. Bass love cover. In fact, in some lakes they love it so much that they'll even stay shallow in cold water seasons like late winter and early spring. Tim Horton explains all as we go in depth.
Come on, six pounder. When I'm working this bait, I really like to yo-yo it up and down. Just tickle it over the tops of the grass. That big old gizzard chatter. Popping that thing. Boy, them bass would be all over it. Then we're going today to one of my favorite lakes in the country. Probably one of the best lakes in the southeast. Lake Gunnersville. It's 60,000 plus acres of just bass heaven. It's full of hydrilla, full of vegetation, which makes for one of the best techniques of fishing a lipless crankbait, which is what we're going to do today. I'm looking forward to it. Well, it's cold out here today. Well, we're going to catch them. We're going to have some fun today. We're out here on Lake Gunnersville today in a, in a really late winter, early spring pattern. The water temperature is cold, it's 44 degrees, and a lot of people think you can't catch fish shallow when it's that cold. But we're going to show today, if you've got cover, you can still catch those fish shallow. We've got a lot of wind out here today, but a lot of times that'll get those fish to bite. The shad gets feeding on all the little sediment that comes off of the hydrilla, and that makes the bass feed also. <laughs> Oh, I like that wind's dying down. I like it. When I'm fishing this lipless crankbait, I'm fishing an Excalibur rattle vibe. I like to fish it real slow this time of year. I don't throw it out there and just reel it in. I really want that fish to get down there and tick that grass. I actually want it to get lodged in the grass at times. And when it does, just pop it free, and that's when you'll get those strikes. There he is. There he is. Oh, that's a good one. Real important when you're fighting these big ones to try to keep your rod down. Try to keep your rod low. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, this is a Lake Gunnersville giant. Oh, we got one hook in the nose. Don't you come off of there. Just let him go. Just let him pull you down. I mean, he is barely hooked. Come here, fish. Pull him easy. Don't you jump, don't you jump. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, I love it. We pulled up here, I was on the other side of this bay and all of these coots were working in this area. And I pulled, look at that, one hook. That's why you gotta have a soft rod and fish those fish really slow. I mean, one little hook was in there on that fish. Look how fat. Oh, that's a beautiful five, six pound fish, gorgeous. Lake Gunnersville is just full of these beautiful fish. I want, I want to tell you also, look at the color on this fish. We're here with 44 degree water temperature. And this fish, look how black and dark he is. That tells me he's been shallow for a long time. We're going to keep fishing the shallow grass if we can get some more. A lot of times these fish will be schooled up like this. Oh, I love that. One thing you want to look for when you're fishing these lakes with, with grass is look for the coots. These coots will be over the submerged vegetation. So if you're going into a big bay and you don't really have a lot of time to look with your electronics over every little flat, look where the coots are. Those coots are going to be setting over the vegetation. They're birds that actually dive down and feed on the grass. I can remember back in 99, it was the very first BASS tournament I won. I won on the Potomac River and it was all about watching the birds. There was these birds feeding in this bay and I went over there and I, I blew that tournament out. I had the best tournament I've probably ever had. There's another one. I may have foul hooked something here. This isn't acting like bass at all. See there, he's got me wrapped in some grass. Stay hooked so we can see you fish. Oh my goodness. Another, another big Lake Gunnersville large bass. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that big old fish. Barely hooked again. Oh, stay hooked, fish. Stay hooked. Don't you do that. Come on. <laughs> oh, look at the grass. The grass tells the story. Oh, man, that is awesome. One hook of that Excalibur rattle bait is in that bass. Oh, that is too cool. That fish didn't even fight it. Just was, it just felt like dead weight. Another five pounder right here on that same grass bed. Look at these beautiful Lake Gunnersville fish. Not a blemish on them. When you go to lakes with hydrilla, it is just full of these big, fat, healthy bass, just like this one. I tell you what, I, I've been doing this all my life. Every time I catch a fish like this, my heart just gets to racing like I'm a little kid or something. It does not get old, it is so much fun. 
That is too cool. I'll let somebody else catch you, big boy. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, let's see if we can get another one. Many years ago in the dead of winter, I was fishing a tournament on Grand Lake in Oklahoma, and we were catching them on buzz baits around any kind of isolated cover you could find, there'd be a big bass. It just goes to prove to you that you can catch bass in shallow water at any time of the year if the conditions are right. People ask me a lot about tackle on lipless crankbaits. What I like to have is a seven foot rod that has a soft tip to it. You don't want a real heavy action rod because when you're fighting those fish, they're apt to throw those treble hooks. So you want something that'll give and that soft action rod will. So I like about a medium to a medium light action rod. The most important thing I can tell you is line size. As you see, as I fished today, I had two different rods. This one has 20 pound XPS fluorocarbon. This one has 14 pound XPS fluorocarbon. With me fishing a little bit deeper today, I used the 14 pretty much all day. But as the summer goes on, as we start getting into spring and in the summer, that grass is gonna get higher. Therefore, I used a 20 pound test to help keep my bait up higher. There he is, there he is. Oh, this is another big one. We are having fun today, I'm here to tell you. This is what we were talking about, about him being schooled up. This is the third cast after that fish I just now landed. Oh, this is awesome. This is what you live for in a tournament right here. <laughs> you just catch a five pounder, you make two more casts, bam. A solid three and a half pounder. Oh, I love it. I love a lipless crankbait in that grass. Again, the most important thing, filling that grass down there and just milking that bait. Don't get in a hurry. A lot of people like to get in a big hurry when they're fishing a lipless crankbait. They think it's a bait you just throw out there and wind in, but it's not. It's something you work almost like you would work a, a jig or a worm slow on the bottom, just tickling it through the tops of that grass. Just another perfect specimen, a beautiful fish. I tell you, our fisheries across the country are doing a great job managing these lakes. Beautiful, not a blemish on him. Let's talk about the different types of lipless crankbaits and when to use each one. I've got two different types here and I want to tell you why I like two different types. I've got a Cordell Spot, which is a lighter bait. Once I find the fish, I can really fish this bait slow. And I've also got an Excalibur rattle bait. That is the bait we use today in the red color. And I really like it as a search bait, but also it really catches them good when those fish are a little bit deeper in that grass. I like a three quarter ounce, which is a little bit larger version like this one here. If I'm around big fish and I know they'll take that three quarter ounce bait, I'll fish it. But for the most part, I use the half ounces. Um, I like the reds, anything with a little purple tint to it, a blue tint, all of that is really good. Now I also like a fire tiger color if you're fishing a muddy water situation, a great color combination. Another one. This feels like a big fish. Anytime you got that head shaking. Oh, <laughs> it's another big one. <laughs> this is too much fun. Oh my goodness. Look at that giant. Oh me. Look at this, folks. Unbelievable, don't you go? <laughs> oh me. It's got a little bit of a sore. It's the first one we've caught with a little sore on him. Probably a bird popped him right there. Look how fat. Another just gorgeous. I mean, look, my hand, I'm at the top of his back and doesn't even come below his belly. Look at the length on that. That is just solid. I mean, they're as wide as they are long. Oh, I love it. I'll show you guys this bait. It's just an Excalibur rattle bait. And I've chosen red. The, the water's got a little bit of a stain to it. For whatever reason, red is a dynamite color. All of that started in East Texas around the Rayburn and Toledo Bend areas and uh, just kind of worked its way north up here around Lake Gunnersville, catching them on red also. There he is. You know, growing up here in Alabama, one thing my dad always did was he took me fishing when I was just a little kid. And 
and he worked a lot. He didn't have a lot of time to take me, so I knew that time was special that when, when he got out to take me fishing. And you know, we, we live in an age today where there's so much going on with kids, with, with the internet, with computers, with video games. It's really, um, I would be heartbroken if I knew I never had that opportunity to get out, experience the outdoors with my dad. And um, you know, I, I, that's one thing when I go to tournaments or I go to seminars, I always thank parents for bringing their kids along because if you're never out here, if you're never out here to experience the great outdoors or a place like Lake Gunnersville, it'll never get near and dear to your heart. And um, that's always important. I can't stress enough how important it is. If you've got little ones, get them out, get them out into the outdoors. You never know how much it's gonna mean to them. This has been a blast. I'm glad you guys joined me out here on Lake Gunnersville. And I tell you what, when you get out, don't ever think that it's too cold to catch fish shallow in the wintertime. 44 degree water temperature. Every one of those fish was less than eight foot deep today. I had a blast, I hope you guys did too. When I'm fishing with these swim jigs, I'll use several different types of trailers. The first is the Denny Brower uh, flipping chunk. And this one has a nice wide profile. That helps keep the jig swimming high in the water column because it provides some extra lift to it. The other type is just a single tail grub. This has a smaller profile, works a lot better in clearer water, and it's going to allow the jig to swim deeper. These are the two best trailers that I've found on this swimming jig. In a world of high-tech digital technology, a simple crankbait can provide a depth-finding system of its own. It's this week's Art of Angling. Much of my success in my career has been attributed to crankbait fishing. I've often taught and utilized crankbaits for two purposes. Uh, one is to locate fish because it's a great tool to efficiently cover water with when you haven't found the fish. You can fish a lot of depths, you can fish it fairly fast, you can see a lot of different water during the day. And also when you locate fish, it's a very efficient at putting those fish in the boat. You know, it's got, it stays down there where they're at. It's, uh, it's got two big treble hooks on it. Usually when you get one on, he, you know, you, you're going to catch him. But the one area that I do utilize a crankbait that most people probably don't relate to is for me, it's actually kind of like a mini depth finder. We were very fortunate when Carl Lawrence created the little green box Lawrence depth finder years ago. Because that little green box gave us the freedom to leave the shoreline and now go out and explore all these deep underwater areas that most fishermen never had fished before. Nowadays, these things are amazing what they can do, what they can show you, how efficient they are. But they do at the same time have some limitations. One of those limitations is that you can only see what's in the cone angle, which is kind of a V-shaped cone going down, getting larger as it goes deeper. But you really can't see what's outside the cone angle. And when I'm fishing in water 15 foot or less, that's where this crankbait becomes a mini depth finder for me. And so not only am I looking at what's under the boat, when I'm using my crankbait, I'm actually, yes, I'm looking for fish, but I'm actually trying to learn the bottom with it. So in that sense, it is like a, a, a depth finder. You know, I'm very conscious that that bait's hitting the bottom and when I hit a stump or, or it's at a rock pile or am I coming over a brush pile? And so I'm learning the habitat that, that's going to hold fish and we all know that bass are object oriented. So anything you hit out there that's an object different from the bottom has potentially it's going to hold fish for you. You know, the other key there is, is I tend to always in practice have multi-depth crankbaits. I may have a deep diver, a medium depth diver, and then a shallow diver so I can match the water I'm fishing. So I don't want to lose contact with the bottom. That's key when you're, when you're trying to locate those objects. If you're swimming above them all day, then, you, then you're blind again. So the other thing is when you contact one of those objects, try to log it down either mentally or, or physically on your map. And, you know, mark where it is so when you come back to it in another fishing trip, even though you might not have caught anything off from it this trip, the next trip you'll be able to catch a lot of fish off from it. So this is an invaluable tool for not just locating fish and catching fish, but also for you to learn the bottom. 